Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you a beer heart recipe. This recipe will have three parts. One is marinade, one is smoke, and one is cooking it in a Dutch oven over a grill as a stew. You can actually mix and match these steps. You can choose to not marinate it and just smoke it. You can also smoke it and just cook it in the Dutch oven. Or you can just use the Dutch oven option or you could, you know, like I said, mix and match all these options. With bear heart, you have to be super careful or with any parts of a bear because it is a wild animal. But with them, you can actually run the risk of getting trichinosis if you don't cook it all the way. So that is one of the reasons why I want to smoke it before I cook it in the Dutch oven. Here are the ingredients and I will also have these listed in the description of the video. So we have carrots, one red onion, some fresh herbs such as thyme, oregano, parsley, bay leaves, and rosemary, one bottle of red wine, you will not use the whole bottle, Worcester sauce, mushrooms, honey, olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic powder, just a little bit of flour, one box of beef broth, and some berries for the marinade and the bear heart itself, of course. If you're going to slow cook it, you will need a Dutch oven. Now, this is much bigger than what you will need, but this is the only one I have, so I'm using this. And you could get maybe a cast iron sauce um, pan that's very helpful and a strainer. I already cleaned this heart and cut it in half before I froze it, and that was back in September. And actually, this bear was not mine. Me and my friend, Lisa, we were hunting, and a couple of her hunters got a bear, and we helped them cut it up, skin it, and pack it out. And they were going to leave the heart behind, and I said, no way. I need it, so I cut the chest open, and I scooped it out. And you could check out that video by clicking that link above. But anyways, back to this heart. I already have cleaned it pretty well, but it needs some more cleaning. So I'm cutting off the top parts of the heart. And I don't know the technical terms at all, but all those tubes and, you know, different things in the top, you basically want to cut it off and discard it. And after that, what you have left is what you're going to use. There are different ways to cook a bear heart. Even if you smoke it, you could smoke it in full, like in one full piece, or you could cut it in two pieces, which is what I'm doing. You can also cut them up into smaller pieces as well as bite size and then smoke it like that. Um, you could cook it in a slow cooker as a whole, although in that case, I would probably recommend it to cut it up but there are so many different ways you can do it and you can find a lot of different recipes. But one more thing that you need to do before you do any of that is to clean off that fatty area around the heart. As you could see, it's not a lot, but all that white area is basically fat and it's not the good kind of fat. If you cook it, it will just taste kind of waxy and you don't really want that. So just trim it off as much as you can and then just wash it one more time. The reason I'm cutting it in half is because when I place it in the smoker, I just want these pieces to lay flat. And if it was one piece, then it would kind of, you know, be folded over and then I have to keep moving it. And I just rather leave it alone while it's being smoked. For the marinade, I'm using olive oil, Worcestershire sauce, red wine, just basically a cup of each. You could kind of use equal parts. And I'm using some rosemary and bay leaves. I put all this with the meat in a Ziploc bag and marinate it overnight in the refrigerator. Just make sure that you, you, you place it in a way so that it's all well distributed. When you're done, you are going to discard this liquid and just basically pat dry the meat because I don't want it to be dripping all over my smoker. At least that's how I will do it. This is my smoker. This is called the big green egg because it looks like one. It actually looks more like an avocado, but I have never owned a smoker before. I never even used one. And this is practically brand new. This is the third time I'm using it, but I was able to pretty much figure it out right away. And it just works so wonderfully. But I know some people have some trouble with this, so I'm going to just walk you through it. 
you're going to get your um, fire started the same way as always using your coal and maybe some um, fire starter and some wood chips. And then here's the main thing. To get the temperature going, you need to open all the way up the bottom part where the air flows in and all the way up on the top where the air flows out. So if you have this unrestricted airflow, your temperature will start rising. You probably just need to give it maybe 15, 20 minutes to pretty much dial in your temperature. When the temperature keeps rising and you don't want it to keep going too high, then you just start restricting the airflow. So you're going to close it on the bottom a little and close it on the top and you just watch it if the temperature starts dropping too much, then maybe you close it too much. If it's going just slowly, then just you stay right there so you can close it just a little bit more so that the temperature will basically stabilize. The best way I could compare this is driving a car. If you are driving on the freeway and you want to speed up, you're going to step on the gas. If you want to slow down without hitting the brakes, you're going to ease off of the pedal and if you want to just go at a steady speed then you know how much gas you have to give that's exactly what you're doing here so once your temperature seems to be stabilized you're going to put in the grill i don't want to do it right away just in case the fire goes out and i need to relight it remember every single time you open it up it will lose a lot of heat but if everything is going well then that heat will start rising and as you can see that is happening here so the key is to give it maybe 15 20 minutes and you have to stand right there and you have to be patient and just keep watching the temperature either go up or go down and just act accordingly and you can guide it to go exactly where you want it to go i think it's actually pretty simple to smoke meat you could smoke it as low as 200 degrees I think the top temperature you probably want to use is 250. So I'm usually happy with somewhere between 225 and 250. So as you see, this is kind of going up a little bit too high right now. So I need to close the bottom and the top a little, but sometimes I just open it up a little bit slowly and just a little so that some of the air can come out and that can maybe make the temperature go down. But like I said, it's trial and error. You just basically stand right next to it and just keep watching that needle. Once it looks like it's stabilized, you could leave it alone for maybe like 15, 20 minutes. And then when you come back, if the temperature is at the same spot, then it's pretty much going to stay that way. As long as there is fuel, it's going to keep burning at that same temperature. And only at that point, I would add the meat. I don't want to add meat before it while I'm still trying to figure out the temperature because it might go up too high and then it actually starts, you know, cooking it and I have to take the meat out and it's just kind of a big mess. But as you could see, it's pretty simple. So like I said, I'm smoking it between 225, 250 degrees and then slow cooking it. I like to use around 300 degrees, maybe 325, just like the way you would do it in an oven. The next day or after about six to eight hours, you remove the meat from the marinade and you don't need to wash the meat but just pat it dry so it won't be dripping all over in your smoker and just slightly coat it with salt pepper and garlic powder and this will be going in your smoker meat is smoked for two to four hours they don't need much longer because they're not very big pieces in the Dutch oven, I have the chopped red onion with some olive oil and I put it aside and in a separate container, I prepare everything else. So I have these long carrots and I like them because they will look really nice. I just simply cut off the top part and slice them in half. Then I'm taking a box of mushrooms and I'm using the whole box and chop them up, just basically slice them up in large pieces so they will match the size of the meat and then I place all the fresh herbs in that same container. I don't chop up anything because you don't want to chop up rosemary and thyme because you don't want to eat them. You just simply want the flavor to cook out. Technically, I could chop up the parsley, but I might as well keep everything uniform. So I keep everything big. So at the very end, I could just grab them, remove them and discard them. The meat is cut up into bite sizes. 
So this way it will be easy to eat, just basically enough in every spoonful, just some mushrooms, some onions and some meat. This is slow cooked for about three hours at 300, 325 degrees. And you should do one taste test after about two hours and do it very quickly because you will lose heat when you open up that lid. And just taste it and add anything that you would need. Uh, miraculously, I somehow added all the right spices and everything in the right amount. So it was all perfect. So I just put it back for another hour to cook. And then when I remove it, I remove first of all the carrots because that will be served on the side with some asparagus. And then I remove all the herbs as much as possible. And because they're pretty long, they're really not that hard to remove. So they will be discarded. And after that, of course, you will take everything out in another container or another bowl because you're going to serve it. That will be the mushrooms and the meat and the onions. And the liquid you have, which is not a whole lot, you're going to strain it into a bowl. Um, basically, I have this cast iron sauce saucer, I guess. It's a pan to cook sauce. I strain the liquid in there and I add just a little bit of honey, maybe two teaspoons fulls, some Worcester sauce and some raspberries. I add one or one and a half teaspoon flour just as a thickener to the sauce. I will place it back onto the grill to cook it for maybe half an hour. So this sauce is very similar to what the meat and everything already tastes, but it has a little more sweet and sour flavor, but it's not too sour and not too sweet, just something a little bit different. And I add the raspberries because I think it's it's a nice little addition. I will also use it as a garnish because bears, they like to eat berries. so. I always think it's nice to use food that the animal likes to eat. This looks delicious. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions or any comments. Nice.